I'm Frank Drake, and I'm the director of the Center for the Study of Life and the Universe here at the SETI Institute. And we're here on this beautiful day celebrating all the wonders of science and particularly the wonders of life and our attempts to find life elsewhere in the universe. I have here an exhibit of orchid plants, which may seem like it's out of place here, but it's not. Uh, there are two respects in which orchids are important to understanding life in space or anywhere in the universe. First, historically, an orchid, which is over to the left to the right of me, was an orchid which was studied by Charles Darwin when he was developing the theory of evolution. And this orchid, which grows then and to this day in Madagascar, is very unusual in that it has a long tube extending from the flower which contains nectar. And this tube is a foot long. And it was a mystery why a plant should have such a tube. And Darwin hypothesized that this tube existed in order to cause a certain moth to get nectar from it and in the process to pollinate the plant so that it would reproduce. Now this sounded like a crazy idea because this tube is a foot long and it meant that the tongue of the moth would have to be a foot long, which of course was very unusual, still is for that matter, and people laughed. But Darwin thought that evolution must have led to this moth developing this very long tongue because otherwise it could not survive. It had to have this tongue if it was to get the nectar from the plant. Well, people went out and searched and didn't find any such moth, and they thought this was all just a, a bit of craziness. After 20 years, Darwin died. But 20 years later, such a moth was actually found in Madagascar. It's a moth, it's only about eight inches across when it flies, but it has a tongue, which is a foot long, which rolls up uh, like a, a, a reel of wire on its forehead, and it in fact extracts the nectar from this particular orchid and in the process allows this orchid to reproduce and to thrive. And in fact, without the orchid, the moth would die, and without the moth, the orchids would die, and so they depend on each other for their existence. And this was a convincing evidence for the correctness of the theory of evolution. So that's a way in which orchids are important. Secondly, orchids are the most sophisticated of plants. They have the largest genome. Their genome is approximately the size of the human genome. And as a result, they can appear in many, many forms. And in the process, they adapt to many, many conditions. And that's what we see here. There are orchids which grow upside down, right side up. They come in all different forms to attract different insects to pollinate them so they can reproduce. There are orchids that are, have special water storage uh, organs so that they can live through droughts. There are orchids who are designed to live in the deserts. And I have examples of all of these here to show how life can adapt. It's one of the things that is most important about life. It adapts to unusual conditions so that it can survive and extend its habitat into places where it previously could not have existed. Orchids exist on every continent except Antarctica, and it's because they are so adaptable that this can be the case. My name is Seth Shostak, and I am a senior astronomer here at the SETI Institute in lovely, glamorous Mountain View. The SETI Institute, S-E-T-I, that's an acronym, and it stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. So we're trying to do here what Jodie Foster did in the movie Contact, which is to say, to try and find out if there's any intelligent life in the universe besides what you find here on Earth. Now, I think that most Americans believe that aliens probably exist, uh, but they also believe, at least a great number of them, that the aliens not only are out there in space, but they're actually here on the planet occasionally abducting people for unauthorized experiments. Uh, I don't personally believe that. I doubt that many of my colleagues do. But we do think that it's very likely that what's happened on this planet has happened probably many, many times throughout the universe. Keep in mind that there are 10,000 billion billion stars that we can see with our telescopes, and the number of planets is probably larger than that. So if what's happened here on Earth is something very special, uh, even so, there are so many other worlds that it's probably happened elsewhere as well. 
So the question is, how could we find them? We can't go to these other worlds. I don't think they're coming here. So what we do is we use the best physics and astronomy that we have to try and find the aliens at home, as it were, by eavesdropping on signals they might be broadcasting our way, either radio signals, flashing lights, things like that. So those are the kinds of experiments that we do here at the SETI Institute that are really SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Now, people will ask me at cocktail parties here in Mountain View, well, have you heard anything yet? And of course, the answer is no. Had we heard something, I wouldn't be talking to you this way today. You would have been reading about it in the papers for a long time and seen it on CNN. But in fact, we are building new telescopes that are greatly speeding up the search. And I'm myself rather sanguine, rather optimistic that we may find something in the next couple of decades. You'll have to just stay tuned, as we will, to find out whether that's true. The SETI Institute also has a complete range of other studies, other research, which is trying to get at the nature of life and could we find life elsewhere, even in our own solar system? Not necessarily intelligent life in this case. For example, everyone knows that Mars might have life, might have had life in the past when there was liquid water on its surface, but Mars is not the only nearby locale where you might find a little bit of biology. There are at least three three moons of Jupiter that probably have very large liquid oceans. They could be sterile, they could have some life in them, we'd like to know. There are a couple of moons of Saturn that seem to have at least the possibility for supporting life. We'd like to investigate those. So there are lots of other areas of research that are pursued here at the SETI Institute by a team of somewhere between 50 and 60 scientists. This is cutting edge research, the search for life on other worlds, and the facts are that it is headquartered right here in Mountain View. Thank you.